bids are in. The gavel's dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, here at WineBid, we are finally hammered. That's right. This is WineBid's podcast dedicated to all things wine value, wine retail, and just wine and wine auctions, of course. My name is Jeff Gern on the WineBid marketing team. With me, as always, is the illustrious wine expert, Paul Walker. That's right. This man is <laughs> an expert at all things wine. Expert at finding knows, interesting wines on our website. He knows wine like nobody else knows wine that I know. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do our rest of the world outside, basically outside of the U.S. and outside of France episode. We're just going to walk through all the stuff coming into auction that that we thought was particularly interesting and give you give you our picks. I'm going to start with Italy, right? Because we right. we always get a lot of stuff from Italy. 88 Sasakaya, we've Saw got that. four of those, five hundred dollars a piece. The tasting notes actually say that the 88 Sassi is actually quite good. Uh, even today, <laughs> who, so, who, who of your of your BFFs on Seller Tracker said it was super great? Well, I don't know why you have to qualify that with Seller Tracker. Maybe I know that's where you're BFFs. getting your notes. I know. Yeah, but how do you know I don't know these people? It's not your group of friends who Remy drink World Peace. Every Remy weekend. World Peace is a great friend of mine. <laughs> who as is SD Soul? Like we are like this. Remy World Peace, SD Soul, and SD like San Diego Saul. Like is one of your your sassy buddies yes yes <laughs> they're all my very good friends in upl they're all very good friends of mine and they all love this one you know, don't hate on sasakaya okay hey i love it the 88 I actually i've had the 88 but not in recent memory it was quite a few years ago it's uh climbing up in price though it's getting it's you know it's getting way up there 500 I mean, yep. price wise, where do you expect this to go? Yeah, you know, that's a good one. I don't because it does, did you say it already has a bid? I don't think it, it does. It does not have a bid, and we have four of them. Oh, so interesting. This this last sold in December of 2022 for 490. Prior to that, it sold in December of 2021 for 420. Prior to that, it sold in July of 2021 for 320. I mean, this has really gone up over the last like two years. Yeah. Probably not. I mean, it's probably going to, I wouldn't expect it to get bid up that much, especially with four bottles available. Probably, you could probably score it at reserve or not much more. Bottles and, I mean, the label's not ideal, but bottles in great shape, you know, fill into the neck. That's, that's always great, especially for late eighties. That should be fantastic. That should be good. It should be seeing uh, 2015 Giacomo Cantero Barolo Peschina. Uh, oh, so yeah. I see we're doing the we're doing the train up and down Italy again this week. I love, I love like, back like, and forth. I love, I love how you're you're like you're like it has to be like you have to go to the next closest vineyard. Yeah, you're like you're like Google talk about, let's talk about or some like direction. Like, oh no, no no this one yeah you you're like oh we're at Petrus. You the only ones you can go to now are La Concilion or you can go to Vieux Chateau Sertan. Next, you no, can't go anywhere you can else. Do Noir, you can do the <laughs> All kinds of different things. It has to be connected. I can. It I can does. Stop anywhere I, in France know, I want, or anywhere very connected to place. So want, okay? you know, when you when you bounce around like this, it just it, it really upsets you. I understand. My it has demeanor. A I understand it, it's difficult for you to like. It really is. It, it, it confuses you. It Paul's really is. totally confused. That's what it that's really what does. Happens. And I have to flip flop back and forth on my list from, you know, Tuscany to Piedmont. Crimea River. Would you like some cheese? Scrolling my mouse Would you like takes a lot of effort. Mind, to, it takes a lot of effort to scroll a mouse. <laughs> God forbid you get a little bit of exercise having to scroll your mouse a little bit. <laughs> I'm doing you a favor. 2015 Giacomo Conterno, Barolo, Toscana, Francia. Francia. You should Cascina, pronounce Cascina, it in the, in the Tuscany style. They they soften their C's. If okay, you okay. Spend any time over there. on Tuscan linguistics. You know that. <laughs> uh, this one is 250. We've got four of them. 97 Paolo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a 50. Yeah, okay. I was going to say there's 16 and two at 265. Well. Both uh, great vintages. Great, both great vintages. 1997 Paolo Scaviano Barolo Brick Delf. Uh, uh, who is the producer? Yes. Paolo Scaviano. Scaviano? Scavino. Sorry, Scavino. Scavino. And there you go. Oh, okay, okay. Look at you asking hey, rhetorical hey, well, questions. Thought, you know, Scaviano was a uh, new who producer was it, I'd never heard of. Oh, uh, who <laughs> I was, was like, it? 125 we've got one of those <laughs> that one's got some nice age on it i mean you're looking at one that's you know 26 years old 
right? So it's going to be beautifully in the drinking window. An 85 Vietti Barolo Rocher. Yeah. This Roche. One, it's a okay. hard C. Okay. <laughs> I don't know which direction to go. <laughs> I think you're just messing with me sometimes. Yeah, this sometimes I really like to just really tear into you. Today is one of those days. Today, 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 I can do nothing right. I can't uh, help it. This one has two bids. Took it from 175 to 195. Oh, it's okay. Interesting. I saw that too. I saw it at 195. I didn't know I had a bid on it already. So yeah, that's yeah. that's a rare one. That's a rare one. One that I thought was cool was this. 95 Giuseppe Kitterali, Almarone. Uh, okay, now you're Alvarone. all the way over in the Veneto. You're just going Possible all over. The place. It is 600. I'm just going to talk over you. It is $600, <laughs> but I'll bet you it's fantastic. We have. Wait, 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 wait. See, I got, I want, I got to follow up geographically with your mentions <laughs> because yeah, I think you're going to go down to you know Sicily now or up to you know. Do you have like all of your something. picks on a map? <laughs> Do you yeah, just have, like, exactly. They're all on the map. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you literally, like, like instead of just doing a list like a normal person, he drops pins of the wines in Google Maps or something like that. <laughs> so it's like, wait, where are you? At? No, let me mention this first before we move out of the Veneto because We're about to move that, out that, of that Veneto ninety-five Quintarelli is a, that's an amazing bottle, and it's got. Uh, I mean, Quintarelli's not cheap these days, so not surprised. Oh. But no, there's a. Did you see? There's a. I think there's more than one. In fact. Uh, three liter of Recioto de, de la Valpolicella Amarone in wood. Yeah, 88 Bertani. There's there's a couple of them, which is there's, there's, wild. There's a, there's a ton of Amarone coming into auction this week. Yeah, there's all sort of the big names, Allegrini and Bertani and everyone else. But I thought those three liters Recioto, I have not seen too many of those around i don't think we've ever sold one actually so anyway really cool to see 80 288 uh, bertani rocciotos uh amarones at 550 apiece just some really really cool really cool amarone you know if, if you are an amarone fan i yeah highly recommend checking out this auction because there's a lot of really neat stuff and, a lot yeah, and it's not it's not crazy expensive i mean the Quintarellis will be but the rest of them are not they're good prices. That wild, yeah. I wasn't gonna say. I wasn't gonna say anything because I kind of. Well, there's like, there's a lot right? to go around, right? There's like there multiple is. vintages of. There's multiple bottles of the same wine, like ninety five Allegrini. That's great stuff. I remember actually when that came out. Again, Barroso gave it tribute. Gary, I don't know how long ago, probably in the late nineties or early two thousands. But there's also ninety six. You know, and those are 75 and under. There's a 74 Bertolo Valpantena Amarone Valpolicella. I, I'd never seen that before for 80 bucks, which I noticed we can, we'll mention, we'll get to other wines later, but there's quite a few 74s in this week, which I'm keeping an eye on for an upcoming crazy birthday. And let's see what else. There's Eugenio Accordini Amarone, which I didn't know from 95. La Viole Reserva for, at 45 Reserve. By the way, I had the 96 uh, Allegrini on my list as well. On your list, yeah. And there's so much Amarone with, with age on it. It's, it's Yeah, 85 crazy. Mazi, 73 Mazi Recioto. Yeah, all kinds of cool stuff. So lots of things, and and there's Del Forno in this week too. I didn't even see that. I must have gotten at it very recently. Two thousand Del Forno, Lotta two eighty five for the money. Frankly, I'd probably I'd probably opt for the Del Forno over the Quintarelli. I mean, it's like four hundred dollars less. But I guess it all depends on your taste. Oh, then there's some Busola TB, the Classico TB. I forget what I think Tommaso. I forget. There's different designations of these wines of the Busola wines. But anyway. 01 and 97. The 01 is 140. The 97 is 115. And Zanato, too. Zanato's, you know, big, big, big brand, but still 95 Valpolic, uh, Amarone Reserva. Yeah, a couple bottles of that. So lots of choices. In you, you, you mentioned the 74 Bertolo Valpantena. It's also got a really trippy bottle. You know, I was just gonna like, I was just gonna say the the only issue is that it looks like the neck is crooked. It looks like you've already drunk it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> in like one sitting. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I'm That's pretty cool. It being crooked, it, it comes that way. That's pretty um, cool. But uh there's a ton of Bartolo Mascarello. 
coming into auction. This yeah, week. nice uh, stuff. I'm not even going to go through all of it just to note that there's a bunch of it. So if you like Bartolo Moscarello, then you should check it out. Uh, 2016 Predatory del Barbaresco, Barbaresco, uh, Montestefano. Montestefano. <laughs> Monte Stefano. Monte Stefano. For 135. There you go. Three of those. 2000 Giuseppe Rinaldi Barolo uh, Brunat Lacoste for 330. Yeah, there's a few. It's interesting because Giuseppe Rinaldi used to used to pop up almost every week for a while. It was really, it was just flying in and out of the auctions. And then it seemed to just kind of go away because I track it every week. And now there's, yeah, 99 Lacoste, 2000 Lacoste, and uh, 2000 San Lorenzo Rivera. And it's serious stuff. The prices are always, well, they've been kind of hovering in that 350 to 450 range for a while. But anyway, three up this week. What do you think of this 2018 Gaia Camarconda? I didn't see that. 2018 Gaia Kamarkanda or Kamarsanda. I'm sure you'll correct me in some way. <laughs> uh, we have three of them for 90 bucks. Yeah, it's one of the Tuscan properties. Yep. No, it's Bulgaria. It's Bulgaria. So we're back oh, in Sasakaya territory. I don't know. I haven't had this wine. I I haven't tasted Kamarkanda for quite a few years. So I don't know. The 18 is probably great. It's probably fun. It got you know big scores. Tasting notes are treating it kindly. Obviously, the guy's a nice producer. 1996 Gianni Borezio Borolo La Serra. This Borezio, one. Yeah. 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 85 bucks. And well, not to be confused with Roberto Borezio, which is more sought after, but still, yeah. Johnny Borezio La Serra. You said the 96? Is that the yeah. one? You're talking the 96. About? Yeah. Yeah. That stuff looks like it could be pretty tasty. I don't know. I've got it on my list. I'm tracking it. And basically the the tasting notes are saying it's it's pretty solid. I'm sure I would imagine it's relative to Roberto. I, know, I don't know, but interesting. I don't know those wines. But that's cool. What what did I miss? What do you got? What are your um let's see? We're okay, yeah. So I think you mentioned oh no, I don't think you did. There's a 2010 a, Adelia Brico Volgara Reserva, a couple of those at 130. You mentioned the Bartolo Mascaros is like a veritable vertical, 890 or 9899001. There's no 02. I don't know if you know if there was one, but there's also the very rare 01 and 04 Mascarolo artist labels. Uh, the 01 is oddly enough. 270 cheaper than the non-artist label which is <laughs> kind of cracks me up maybe somebody out there knows something i don't know but it's interesting that the 01 artist label is at 270 and the 01 non-artist label is at 380 there's a mag of i believe this one or no wasn't in last week but there's a mag of jacosa 11 again it's this time it's the barbaresco santo stefano at 300 bucks that'll probably get grabbed up jacosa magnums don't last long there's a Group of nice Berlotto, Vigneto Monviguera wines, 08, 09, 11, 12, and 13. There's a 90 Capilano. Let's see, Otin Furin, Kabuti at 430. 74 Gaia Barbaresco. I saw that too. Another 74 I, yeah. I, I flagged uh, at 400. And yeah, I mentioned the Conternos. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there's both Giovanni and Lorenzo Acamaso Barolos, and they're all kind of in the same range, that kind of Rinaldi range as far as pricing. There's, there's, if, excuse me, there's 99 Giovanni Acamaso Roque, 2000, 2001, and then 03 Lorenzo Acamaso, the Mie Vigne, and 01. Lorenzo Acamaso, Roquette, Annunziata Reserva. So lots of really nice Piedmont stuff this week for sure. And then in, uh, let's see, let's see in Tuscany, I picked this 97 Argiano Solengo. That looked really, really tasty at 80 bucks. Uh, great Tuscan vintage, not, you know, under $100 for a super Tuscan, I think is is really, really good. There's 01 Charbiona Brunello at 350, which is, man, that's a lot. But 
That's what it's going for. Uh, 16, Il Poggione Brunello at 65. Thought for that great producer, it wasn't a terrible price. It's young, so it needs some time, but still. That's 90, cool. there's five bottles of 90 Antonori Tinian Yellow, which kind of reminded me of the Sasakaya, multiple bottles of, of each wine. Looks like somebody cellared them way back when, and and uh, now they're available. So anyway, five of the 90 Tinian Yellow for 200 a piece. There's a little mini selection of Montevartini and Pergola Torte. There's the 14 at 255 and the 17 at 200. Uh, there's the Ornelias, I think it's the third label, uh, the 19 La Volte at 25. And then there's um, the expensive white wine club, Ornelia Bianco, 18, three of those at 200, <clears throat> 200 a piece. And then a mag of 2012 Tenuto Trinoro, the Palazzi at 250. So, and then before I go on to something else, let's see. I mentioned those three liters of Bertani Amarone. Oh, yeah, there's a 79 uh, Emilio Pepe Montepulciano, which is very cool. Uh, I don't see too many older versions of that wine that often. At 335, there's some. Um, Etna Wines, Pascio Pichiaro, 14. There's a case of that at 45 a piece. And then a 17 Franchetti, two of those at 90 each. And I think that rounds out my Italian picks. Let's head over to Germany. Oh, yeah, all kinds of stuff, huh? There's a ton of stuff in Germany. There was a bunch of um, JJ Prum. I'm not going to go through it, but we have a, a bunch of JJ Prum coming to auction. I I love JJ Prum, great producer. We had an 01 Fritz, Haig, Braunberger, uh, Juffer, Sunnenau, Sunnener, Riesling, Auslese, Nummer 6. Three of those for $80 a bottle. We have a bunch more uh, Fritz Haig. We have 2003 JJ Christoffel, Erben, Erdner, Trepkin, Riesling, Auslese, Nummer 10. This one for $40. I thought that was a Pretty darn good deal for something with an Auslese with 20 years of age on it. Don't forget to mention it's an Auslese two star. There's there's one star, Sorry, no star, one star, and two star. So my bad. Auslese, <laughs> I, I did. You're right. I I neglected to mention that it is two star. We had a O2 Robert Vile Vile Kiedrich Kiedrich Grafenberg. Riesling Auslese number eight. This one for eighty dollars. 2019 forced. Forstmeister, Gelz, uh, Zilkin, uh, Sauerberger, Rausch, Riesling, Spätlese, Nummer 4. We have 12 of these at 40 bucks a piece. We have a 1975 Schloss, Elst, Rauen, Taylor, Balken, uh, Riesling, Auslese, Nummer 16. This one has one bid, taking it from 55, it's up to 56. I think that's a tremendous deal for something from 75, right? An outside yeah, from for 75 sure. for 56, 55 bucks. For sure. So I, I probably would have bought that if this person did not bid on it. And then in 01, Dr. F. Uh, F. Vines, Prum, Erdner, Prelat, Riesling, Auslese, Nummer 7, two of those at 35 a piece. Just a lot of ridiculously good stuff if you if you like german wine this is the week for, this is a great week for you yeah it's great it's cool that it's it's neat to see also the 2020 dr lucen there's villain or son or Spelesa for 25 bucks i mean that's from that vineyard and producer that's a great great deal those gelt zillican wines i think it's it makes sense that i mean they do need some time but Still, I mean, it's probably less than retail for a lot of these things. But and they're, they're, they're stuff, awesome. The fact that you're looking at like Auslaces from 75, like that's probably drinking pretty darn good right Yeah, now. and I'm thinking about like the 19s and 20s that like that are up this week. That's that's more what I was talking about. Yeah, the, the 19 that I mentioned, the Spätlese, I mean, that one definitely needs some time, but it, it's going to be phenomenal stuff. These are all great producers. So we head over to Spain. Spun. Sure. I won't go through all of them, but I'm a big fan of Muga, and we have a bunch of Muga in auction this week. I kind of don't want to go through them and mention them because I really like Muga, and I might bid on some of those. And <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's I, quite a few. I mean, I don't there's know. Quite a few uh, balls of Muga. There was a. I only have a few, a couple other picks from Spain. 1975 Bosegas Tora uh, Alba Don uh, Pedro Jimenez Gran Reserva. We've got a 375 of that for 85 bucks. I actually thought that was a, a pretty good deal. That stuff is 
so good that yeah it's tasty yeah, that's, it is tasty and then this 1975 miguel torres gran coronas black label reserva we got one of those for 90. what do you got anything you're checking out in Spain? yeah those those two pescaras that snuck in this week were were interesting to me there's a 75 and an 82 that i don't think have been in very recently at all the 82 is quite a bit less it's 75 bucks and then the 75 is 175 so those were my couple of picks from from spain this week there's also what was the other thing that stuck out there's casa castillo p franco it's like super high point stuff and then there's some el nido different wines in this week if you like spoofulated spain wines and then what else some Juan Gil who made a blue label, actually. I don't I don't know that wine, but I've had it. It's all good. kinds of things. It's Prado good. Enea, there, yeah, there's there's a lot of great Muga wines. There's there's all sorts of things. So Muga stuff is tasty. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Oh, there's yeah, that's right. There's the Rumbo wines. That that I think this one snuck in very recently. 19 Commando Rumbo Norte Garnacha at 565. These wines are super collectible and super expensive. I've never tasted them, but... They're not cheap. No. Let's head over to uh, Portugal. There's only one thing I wanted to mention from Portugal. Some ports came in. 1977 Taylor Floodgate port for 135 I thought that was a pretty good deal. You know, on that tip, I saw there was half bottles of 97 Taylor for I 55 which I thought was, was like super great because, you know, they're. I mean, it's not ready to drink, but... There's so, a bunch of there's a bunch of great port coming into auction this week. Yeah, it's not, you know, because and half bottle is a good size, right? Because people are not drinking. I mean, and vintage port, you can't you can't just open it and keep it on your shelf for weeks like tawny ports. You got you kind of have to drink it. So I thought, you know, half bottles to me are more collectible, make more sense. It's kind of like Saturn and 97 is this super banner vintage. So anyway. <laughs> What's the longest vintage. you would let a vintage port sit? Like before? I have, I've, I've opened sixty threes with the vacuum in, and they last like about a week, a week and a half. That's if you're, you know, or putting it in the fridge or something, just so it's in a, you know, a, not a, a somewhat airtight environment. But they don't last more than a couple of weeks. They start to fade, and I mean, some people probably really don't like it after a, you know a few days. If they're if they're oxidizing, but with, I find with the vacuum in they're they're in, they last about a couple of weeks. Um, it, I mean, it depends on how old it is, you know. But then yeah. young young, I don't like. I mean, I wouldn't even open the ninety seven for another ten years, probably. But the seventy sevens, yeah, that's great. Sixty threes, fifty fives, all those. Nineteen seventy five. Sh- we're we're leaving Portugal. Oh, okay. <laughs> over to taking a plane over to Lebanon. Seventy five Musar for one eighty. Actually, what's what up to one ninety? It's got a bit on it already. It started at one eighty. When, when did that get in? I didn't see that come. It must have been. That, was it added today? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I don't know when it was added, but it was in today. Oh, okay. But I noticed this Musar, and I'm. I'm a Musar fan. I like Musar. It's great. And then I'm worried that's the only wine from Lebanon, so we have to leave Lebanon. I'm going to head over to Sylvania, where we have a 2019 Chateau Bella Riesling, which started at 20 and four bids has already taken it to $24. And this one I'm super interested. I would love to try some, I would love to try some Slovenian Riesling. Yeah. What's, what's the producer name? Chateau Bella, B-E-L-A. B-E-L-A? Yeah. Chateau Bella Riesling, huh? Is this the stuff that's okay? No, I was gonna say, I thought because Egon Muller, it looks like so. I mean, it says it's Egon Muller, yeah, that's yeah, which amazing, amazing German producer. So that's really cool, yeah. This is, yeah, you're right, got a lot of bids already. It's probably one of those culty collectible, you know, Riesling Slovakian. Well, I- I think it's wow. one of those things where Egon, maybe it's Egon Mueller's vineyard, in, like he bought a vineyard in, or they bought a vineyard in Slovenia or Slovakia. Sorry. Yeah, that is really wild, huh? That's a cool find. So anyway, where, where I wonder where this is going to end up hammering for because. I mean, four bids on Monday. It means usually there's going to be a lot. I, I my lot guess on it. Fifty bucks. You think so? I don't know. I sure. Why not? I mean, you know, I think it's one of those things where it's like, 
it's not like we see these wines come up a lot and they're not super accessible. So, you know, is it worth paying a little bit of extra money to get your hands on something like this? Yeah, and, it's probably not going to be that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. 50 bucks for something, especially something that that hard to find, you know, definitely not definitely worth it, I would say. I mean, you look on Wine Searcher, there, there's none in the United States. Yeah. Like, I think this is like, this is it. I mean, there might, maybe there's some somewhere, but you're not going into Costco and picking this up. You know, you're not going into total <laughs> wine or beverage. Store I don't, I mean, bowl. you may buy your wine at Costco, Jeff. I don't, I don't do that. Well, I, I know you <laughs> don't, you know, because, because you're, you're a bit of a poodle. No, but they, they well, they say they, they sell more wine, I think, than, than anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've but looked- you know what? Frederick Wildman imports this wine. I just looked it up while you were singing its praises. And apparently... It says wines from Chateau Bella can be compared to the great Auslese wines of Germany, ancient property on, of the Baron Ullmann situated in Slovakia on the banks of the Danube River. Huh. First vines planted by the Romans today, reason grapes are grown on the hills below the castle and vitified by Miroslav Petrek and Egon Miller. Oh, so Egon Miller is actually making the wine. That's pretty what it, cool. That's what I said. It literally says on the bottle produced and bottled by Egon Miller. Yeah, but. That, does that mean that, you know, that the wines are made at the winery in Slovakia and Egon Miller just has his name on it? Or is he actually, you know, taking part in the winemaking? That's, no. that's interesting. But look, by producing and bottled by Egon Miller, what that means is that Egon Mueller himself, like, picked those grapes, he stomped on them, <laughs> turned that into wine, and then poured it into bottles, and then works <laughs> in those bottles. And then somebody else maybe distributed them, but... As so far as I could tell, that dude did it, but with his own two hands. But in the more, okay, interesting, because Egon Miller has discovered the potential of the wines in the Chateau Bella area of Slovakia and makes a dry Riesling, which objective is to challenge the best Rieslings from Austria and the Alsace Riesling. So this is region, excuse me. So this is really up your alley, Jeff, because you're really into Alsace. I am. You know I love Alsatian. Well, you're too late because it's already got four bids, so... Yeah, yeah. It's this one's going to the moon. I need to figure out. Oh, and I love like I love people's usernames. Poor decisions with poor is P-O-U-R. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway, well, I think that just about concludes it for the rest of the world outside of uh the US and France. Oh, is this the are we we concluding the entire rest of the world here? I, is there something else you wanted to mention? I think no. I, I was just scanning my very complicated map of the world and where all the wines are. And I, you know, it takes me a while to go through it. But yeah, I think that's everything. <laughs> I think that's not very everything. efficient, is it, Paul? Not very efficient. Wait, there was a bottle from Portugal that I'm not going to mention because I want to bid on it. <laughs> Perfect. I'll go find out what that is so I can bid on it first. <laughs> when, when, all right. This has been Jeff McGurd and Paul Walker with Wine Bits Finally Hammered. Wishing you a happy bidding and uh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers.